What will you do to unlock innovation? In today's fast-paced world, innovation might not be enough. Tomorrow's pioneers of change will need to be agile, able to adapt, and committed like never before. Your host, Santa Vending, invites you to listen in and join business leaders from around the world as they share their visions for success in our future business challenges. Welcome to Mind the Innovation. I'm your host, Sana Vinding. I'm always excited to learn. And in today's podcast, we'll talk about learning, problem solving, and leadership. I want to welcome Fred Leland. He's a retired police lieutenant. Fred has more than 30 years experience teaching in law enforcement and security. He's a graduate of the FBI National Academy Class 216, where he specialized in terrorism related topics, leadership, and management. Welcome, Fred. I'm so glad to have you on my podcast today. Um, tell me about your, your passion about learning and, and teaching. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks. Thank you, Santa, for having me on. I really appreciate it. This is this is a, a topic I'm very uh, passionate about. Um, and my like you've mentioned, my my learning uh, and teaching is centered mainly around um, policing uh, over the last well, going on 37 years now, believe it or not. That's hard to believe. <laughs> but um, goes fast. my passion for <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it does. My, my passion for teaching started believe I was just a kid, a young a young marine uh, uh, over in Lebanon and and we got the finger pointed at us by the by the uh, the colonel who said you six pointed six guys out are going to go teach the the Lebanese armed forces. You're going to go train them. And we're like, really? <laughs> right. So long story short, we, we put training programs together, uh, sent around a host of different things. Uh, and we tried to be even, even though we were young, we tried to be very innovative back then. We made different things, targets out of, with ropes attached to them so that they would um, pop up and we'd try to make decision-making the best we can. But the bottom line, that's where it began. Yeah. And over the years, um, over the years of, of teaching now, um, my passion has been to uh, adapt it so that we get better at what we do. A lot of the teaching that we taught, the ways we taught over the years was very linear, set on solving specific problems um, in, or, or technical problems, if you will. And that's one of the things I learned at probably close to 20 years ago, it hit me that, wait a minute, something's, something we're doing here is not, not right. It, we're teaching school solutions for everything. Yeah. Do it this way. Um, and it didn't work. And I, I was a machinist years ago too, uh, in the mix of my military between high school and, and going in the Marine Corps. And then after I got out of the Marine Corps, before I became a police officer, I was a machinist. And those technical problems, those blueprints that we make a path or whatever it is, a, a widget or whatever it is we make that if you don't follow those blueprints, you don't make the path. It doesn't work, right? Yeah. And it's very technical. So you had to make things exact. But what I learned is the different types of problems we faced as police officers were very adaptive. They were adaptive challenges. They were uh, more complex. Um, they were rapidly changing, fast moving. Uh, there was tons of uncertainty in, in, in them. And, and we were still trying to come up with school solutions to handle, a, let's say, a, whatever, an active shooter, a worst case scenario, right? Uh, handle an active yeah. shooter by doing this, this, and this, and laying out the steps. And, over time, we realized that how, how are we coming up with solutions to problems we don't you even haven't know faced. What the problem is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't even faced it. Right? Yeah. And we can look at our history, which was a big thing, and learn from our history and patent recognition, which is important. But at the same time, you have to you have to look at and find anomalies that, that things that are different in this particular set of circumstances. So that became my passion. How do we do it? in a, a more effective way. And yeah. a lot of that for me centered, centered around changing and, and developing guys to what we what uh, is called outcomes-based. Uh, used to be called outcome-based training and education. Now it's called outcomes-based learning and education, um, playing on, on different words um, and their meanings. Like training is like sit, you know, like training a dog, right? We both were talking about dogs earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, sit sit spot, and he sits, and you give him a treat, and everything's yeah. over. And you can train the certain things and skill sets we can train uh, and develop. In policing, it would be 
you know, firearms related or uh, drawing your weapon out of your holster or putting, a, putting it back in your holster, how to communicate. Yeah. You can train certain things. But at the same time, uh, we have to have the ability to adapt and adjust. Yeah. So a big piece of it for me became, wait a minute, a lot of what we do in our organizations, and it's and from what I understand, it's the same in a lot of non-police organizations, any organization for that matter, is we, we try to come up with solutions to technical problems, and they work great for technical problems. We mm -hmm. can have the cookbook, the recipe, the yeah. SOP, you the follow policy. It. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You follow it, but nobody's, yeah, yeah in, in a technical problem, nobody's working against you. But with an adaptive challenge, more complex issues, something that we haven't seen before, we have to figure the problem out first, yeah. right? And that was a big, a big problem. So we, we started learning how to develop people that way. So we, instead of focusing on school solutions, we started focusing on things like sense making, right? How do we make sense of the certain set of circumstances that are unfolding in front of us uh, so that we can frame it? and solve the problem or come up with a course of action and at least start to solve it. And then adaptability became another thing. So that a lot of problems in police work uh, and probably other organizations as well is once I start with a solution, I don't wanna break away from it. I fail to adapt when even though everything's telling me I should. So we wanted to make sure we were getting adaptability in, into it as well. So that individuals that are learning in solving problems when they realize, hey, this isn't quite what I thought it was, not to be afraid to adjust and adapt yeah. to it so that they can make those changes. And a lot of other things that came along with those, those three core competencies, these sense-making, problem-solving, and adaptability, uh, metacognition was big. How do Think about how we're solving problems and think about how we're thinking, if you will. Uh, are we doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, and and if, we, if we're not doing it, uh, how is that impact and the results that we're seeing on the street? Like, I don't know if you're living in California, I'm sure you've seen on the news this week that the, we already got a big trial from last year, yes. the Floyd case. And yeah. then we just had an incident uh, a week or so ago with the taser, right? Yeah. The taser, the lady, the female police officer thought she had her taser, she had her gun shot and fired. And yeah. Obviously that's very controversial. And that comes from stimulus response training. Right, just training somebody with a weapon and a gun, and then saying, yeah. "Okay, we're going to give you a taser, and here's your taser, and you get to shoot two or three taser rounds out of it because they're expensive, okay. right? This comes into leadership, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So you yeah. shoot two or three, and then yeah, you put it on the other side in the cross draw, but still, what comes back? Stimulus response comes back. Yeah. So she thinks she's thinking taser. She actually draws her gun, and in the heat of the moment, to to the lay person." It seems like how could how could that happen, right? Yeah. But in the heat of the moment, when things are happening fast, it can happen, and and that to me is a training flaw. All right, yeah. it's a it's a it's a scar, and that was a big piece of it. So we have to look at how we train. That's what the metacognition about how we think, uh, how we process information, and then so that we can focus our attention on actually solving the problem instead of. Uh, that's the other, the fifth core competency I try to hone in on is attention control. I should be, I should be looking at the problem in an effort to solve it if it's adaptive, not thinking about what are the steps, right? Yeah. I have to look at the problem, see what it's happening, and uh, adapt and adjust and come up with a plan to to deal with it. And that's not always easy uh, to do. It's nice to have a checklist, right? Oh yeah, and, yeah, and, no, that's, that's your base. We, we come right? up with. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we come up with them for everything, and they work great if everything unfolds uh, the way they're supposed to, right? Yeah. If it all but happens, that's not the how way the world works, to. right? Yeah, it's exactly that's yeah. not how it works no. at all. No, no, no. So, so a big how piece you, of what I've done yeah? is try to adapt it. To adapt it. So I think we learn every day, right? Um, and Absolutely. we learn from Absolutely. from good experience. We learn we learn from from bad experience. So how how can you mm -hmm. teach? Because I'm sure within the police enforcement, so if, if somebody had a great learning experience, good or bad, how do you how do you make sure that that knowledge can be can be shared? Because that could be something that will be great for somebody else to know. Saying, "Oh, this is not that it's a checklist, but it's more the thought process of how to solve it." How how do you how do you get that? If you did it, I don't know. I'm asking, right? Yes, is that possible no, we to do share? Do it. 
Yeah. Yes, it is. It's possible to share, but then you got to break down barriers, right? Status oh, yeah. quo is a powerful problem. We got the organizations, yes. right? I'm, I'm assuming you see the same thing in your world. Oh, yeah. Um, and we have to break them down. And that's why when I look at everything, when I see problem solving, teaching, training, uh, facilitation, uh, whatever we want to call it, uh, I, I see that plus leadership as a key. Um, I wrote a book, a self-published book on Amazon with a, a gentleman named Don Vandegrift, who's really, he began to rest and guy for you to get on here too. He taught me a lot of this outcomes-based stuff along okay. with Bruce Gudmundson, both yeah. fantastic. But um, we wrote a book, I call it the, the Adaptive Leadership Handbook, Innovative Ways to Teach and Develop Your People. It was written for security and, and police personnel it, because they're connected. Because the culture we have uh, or we try to form First of all, a big, a big piece of, of how I, I operate or how I teach of philosophies or ideas, theories, are based on a, a Colonel John Boyd. Uh, I'm not sure if you, if you've, if you heard of him. He's, he's deceased. He died in 97, but his, he was an Air Force fighter pilot who came up with uh, several different uh, briefings he used to do, but the OODA loop, the observe, orient, decide, and act loop, um, how, a learning loop. Uh, decision making uh, cycle. Uh, it, it's called multiple things like Boyd cycle. It's also called. Okay. Yeah. So how how we observe, orient, decide, and act. But he everything he did once he started this whole process uh, as a fighter pilot learned about it and how how they got uh, were able to make good sound decisions in the heat of battle, if you will, uh, in the skies. And he, then he transferred it to land warfare, etc. And, and what I've been doing over the last twenty years is 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 uh, adapting it to policing and, and guys like Terry Barnhart, uh, who you know, yeah, uh, who works in your world, uh, he's 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 been really trying to adapt it to the research and development uh, folks in pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, uh, so it, it works in a host of different ways. But he combines uh, he does the OODA loop he's famous for. He also has done patents of conflict. Uh, organic design for command and control, which is all about the leadership climate you need. And he came up with a theme, he called it the theme for vitality and growth. So how do we, in other words, how do we, uh, this is how I interpret it. How do we, what type of organization do we need that emboldens and influences in a positive way, this growing that includes learning, development, problem solving, all these types of things with the aim of, of, of basically um, uh, go out and be able to do the things we need to do, solve the problems we need to solve, mm -hmm. uh, adaptive or technical or a combination of both uh, in a positive and effective way, all yeah. right? And he said a, a couple of key things. One was uh, insight. You need to have insight to generate interest in the being able to solve a problem, right? People like yourself uh, are passionate about learning. Passion drives you to want to learn more, right? Yeah. Be it solve a problem or how to teach guys to learn yeah. to solve problems, right? And, 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 and you need that. You need, the, you need that insight because uh, it helps us, uh, it, it drives interest, which helps us think about how we view a certain thing. Uh, with an open mind, because how I might be thinking about something while I'm talking to you, yeah, right, is one way. But then after we have a conversation, it triggers things. Oh, I've yeah. gone to a, several things in your world. I've gone with uh, uh, Terry Barnhart's invited me to do these decision making exercises with pharmaceutical folks. And yeah. I've learned so much. I've gone a couple of times over the years with them to big conferences. And it's out of my realm. It's out of my world. But at the same time, we had a, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, doing decision making exercises, and the folks from your world learned a lot by doing these exercises. A lot of oh, things yeah. about teamwork, yeah. communication, collaboration, the speed in which, when you're in person, uh, we can actually make decisions versus when we're using electronics and texting and <laughs> yeah. emailing each other back and forth. There's a I'll get the I'll get the sign of tomorrow, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we it. skip it. Yeah. yeah. Versus when you're in person, so there's a ton of these little lessons we learn. And, and that comes from that insight and that interest in, in be it learning, problem solving, decision making, how to become a better leader, 
yeah. uh, so that we influence the organization in a positive way. All those things come into place. And, and, it, and it builds the type of um, uh, organizational culture, if that's the right yeah. word for it, um, that drives or that builds that trust or what Boyd, Boyd in, in his work called harmony, right? Uh, in yeah. the organization where it gels and it and it's fluid and it's back and forth and people are open-minded and they're sharing information to communicate up, down and across the, the organizational culture, which is like, when, when you see that and have it, it's rare. I hate saying yeah. that, it's rare. <laughs> but when you see it, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. thing, right? To see it because it, it builds this adaptability or agility uh, and, it, and then ultimately, the goal is it leads to folks taking that individual initiative to solve problems without having to be told. And we need in the police world, I, that's big. That's very important, right? Because a lot of if I want that observation, orientation, decision, and action cycle to be smooth, so they can solve a crisis, yeah. right? whatever that crisis might be, I, I need that front line those guys, those street cops, those police officers who work the beat, who respond to the calls, that if you notice, they're the ones, uh, they make or break police departments. It's the individual policeman, right? Yeah. And he has to be able to make a decision. And all too often in police work, there's a very centralized top-down structure, right? Which hinders and stifles this initiative. It, it, we rule by, by rank or yeah. policy and procedure. And everybody's nervous to color outside the lines. Although they'll tell you it's meant to be a guideline, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're going to solve problems. But yet when you, when the guideline, when you use it as a guideline, there's no problem. It's A-OK. -okay. But as soon as there's an issue where something happens in, in, in that world, bad things can happen, yeah. including up to, up to including the cost of, of, of life or death. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of a sudden that, that SOP or that guideline, that policy becomes dogma, right? Yeah. And then, and over a period of time, when people see that, okay, they say one thing, but whenever something goes bad, it becomes another, it becomes strict. Everybody's initiative stifled. Problem yeah. solving is stopped. I'm looking for the supervisor instead of solving the problem. Yeah. And, and that is, to me, that's all connected. That's even as a, as a instructor, which I still teach nowadays, I still teach. I teach leadership. I teach problem solving, uh, decision making, uh, all these things we're talking about uh, at police academies and to veteran in service. Uh, I do, and it, it's 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 important uh, how we teach. It's sometimes everybody's always looking to change topics. It's not so much the topics; it's oftentimes how we teach it. If I lecture to you and yeah. tell you what to do, you forget it as soon as you leave the classroom. Oh much, yeah, that's, right. Yeah. 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 Instead of instead of using scenario based work, which is a big part of what I do, everything's I call them tactical decision games and after action reviews is a big, big piece of how I teach today. And, and yeah. I don't care what it is when it, when I'm training cops, it's, I throw them in the scenario a lot. Here's another one. And is I don't teach them the theory first. I just throw them into into the fire. Yeah. Right. And let them figure out the problem. And then somewhere in the aftermath, once I start seeing them get it. They go into the problem, they try to solve it, they make mistakes, they do certain things right, they do certain things wrong. We talk about, then we talk about their strengths and weaknesses, a quick after action review. And then we say, yeah. okay, how do we solve that problem? And then we send them on to do it again. And then, and they get better at it, and yeah. better at it as they go. It builds confidence, builds oh, yeah. competence, um, builds a willingness to learn more. Um, and ultimately towards the end of a training program, or somewhere along the way, I'll talk about the theories behind learning this way, which is really, a, 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 there's a lot of research on it. Uh, Elizabeth and Robert Bork out of UCLA, uh, in the Memory and Forgetting Lab, uh, Make It Stick is another book that's fantastic that talks about teaching this way, outcomes-based um, yeah. and desirable, difficult, making it difficult for an individual to learn. Yeah they retain it longer and, and not only retain it, but are able to grab it from the mind. It's nice putting knowledge in here, but yeah. all too often when I put the knowledge in and you leave the room and a week later, something happens, you can't remember. You yeah. can't, no, you, you can't have remember to, you have to go through the process of doing it, right? Because then the, you actually mm -hmm. get it, you, you will remember it. 
even if it's good or bad. I think that's what you remember if you burn your hand uh, on the yeah. stove, right? You actually <laughs> felt it. So you're not yes. doing it again. <laughs> yeah, and I, there's a whole, uh, yeah. a whole racket, a, a whole um, uh, uh, research behind it that talks about what the, 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 more, the more I can come in and retrieve things and pull it out, the longer I retain things, right? Yeah. In other words, the knowledge I got is super, but it doesn't do me any good if I can't apply it to problem solving. And yeah. So I have to be able to take what I know and apply it. And all too often, the learning methods and policing we've used have been rote memorization. I got people who, who, while they're in class, can regurgitate the information right back to me. And then yeah. a week, 10 days later, they've forgotten it all, right? Because oh. they, they haven't been taught right in the old ways we used to do it. I used to teach that way. That's how they taught us to teach. Lecture, yeah. and tell them what to do. Yeah. What I did is I... I ended up reshaping everything. And instead of teaching them uh, how to think and do, I, I, instead of telling them how to think and do it, I teach them how to, how to actually think and how to solve the problem. Yeah. And, and ultimately, I always joke with them and tell them, look, I didn't teach you anything. You taught yourself, right? <laughs> and, and we just yeah. tweak and facilitate. Yeah. And, they, and, then they you, and then you could just disappear from the room, right? And you did your job. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, there's been times, matter of fact, doing these, these five-day leadership classes, there's times that me and the other, usually I teach it with another co-instructor. Yeah. I tell them, let's go, let's leave. Yeah. We leave the room. <laughs> and they, and they, it's loud. Once they get into it, it's loud. Yeah. They're working, yeah. they're, doing, they're, do, they're developing scenarios. Uh, things I've learned from your world, like Terry Bonhart, critical yeah. question maps. Yeah. Um, uh, A3s. I teach them nice. all different kinds of ways to oh, solve problems, awesome. right? In the police yeah. world. Um, and it's funny because some of these things, those are very linear, right? Linear processes. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, yeah. But it, it, makes them, it makes them quick. They're able to adapt them when yeah. they stop playing around with these different problem solving tools. Because it gets right? visible, right? In one, in one area, you get all oh, the yeah. questions and answers. And then from okay. there, you can, you can go from there. Let me share. The, I got to share this story because this is beautiful. Okay. This is 10 years ago, not 2009, I think it was. Uh, I was down at Quantico. This is where I first met uh, Dr. Terry Bonhart. Yeah. And he's, he's up there. I, I talked about a scenario. We were at a Boyd conference at Quantico, at, uh, the OODA Loop, and we're trying to see. And I was the only cop in the room. There was probably 100 Marines and a couple of guys from your world trying to figure out this OODA Loop and how it, how it impacts strategy and tactics and uh, how we learn and solve problems. Anyway, to make a long story short, and that's not easy for me, right? <laughs> As you okay. can tell, right? Um, Terry Bonhart was there and he was teaching critical question maps. And I'm sitting in the back with a group. He put us into groups and I'm sitting in the back and I'm going, what are we doing? What are we doing here? What yeah. is this, right? The critical. And then all of a sudden I, I'm watching a couple of guys put questions up. And they're slapping them up on the wall and I go, hey, how about this? And then another guy goes, yeah, what about that? Next thing you know, this thing, it just, it took off. Yeah. And I, I, I went from this, this negative, yeah. right? Uh, here I am. And I, the guy yeah. likes to teach you. You're resistant, right? Um, no right? way. I'm resistant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no way. Yeah. So a longer, to make a longer story sh uh, uh, shorter, sure. yeah. I take this info, I fall in love with it. I'm like, oh my God. So I come back and I've been setting up for my community a active shooter drill that included not just the police department, but the school, the teachers, the students, the health department, the DPW, the fire department, uh, the regionalized SWAT team, everything. Yeah. And I've been trying, I had been trying to get time to do a tabletop exercise with these folks. And every time I scheduled one, the town administration would shut it down and say, we don't have time this week, let's do it next week. Well, when I came back from Quantico and learned this method, over the weekend, I Tuesday they gave me Tuesday two hours. Yeah, they gave me to do the prep exercise for the Friday full scale exercise. Can you imagine that? So I said I'm going to use this technique. Yeah, I went out. I went out. I bought the the, the post it notes and the markers, and I set up the tables and I stood there. I was there early, and I stood there looking at it, and I went to myself. I was the fear overtook me, right? We were doing this new method. I, I went, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell them what to do. Yeah. Right. And that entered my mind for a minute. I was, I was starting to pick them up, put them back in my bag. And I went, you know what? You got to practice what you preach. 
right? And I left it there. So long story short, they come in and I throw, all I said to him was this, you got an active shooter in the school. You have an active shooter in the school. Everybody's in the room, there's 30 bosses, right? Yeah. In this room. Yeah. And I said, you got an active shooter in this school. What critical questions you need to answer, yeah. right? To solve this tactical dilemma. Yeah. Go. You got, I gave him 20 minutes, right? Oh, wow. You go. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But, but you go. don't have a much. And, yeah. But that's good. Right. I didn't have much. And they went at it. And I yeah. was sitting there. I was a nervous wreck. I was the fear, right? Of changing. The yeah. fear of changing my method of teaching. And they went at it, right? And it, the, you couldn't hear yourself think in the place after a couple of minutes. It was loud. They posted, they had all posted. kinds of stuff up awesome. on the thing. They were posting them up and they went at it. I had, a, I had the principal of the school come over to me and he whispered in my ear, he goes, after, after they were doing it. And obviously yeah. we went through the questions and they put them in the flow state. They did all this stuff. In two hours, we were done. And he comes up to me and he says, hey, Freddie, he says, we can do this stuff, right? Yeah. We can do this, right? And it was yeah. all from that simple method, method. right? Method, yeah. Of, of, of making, a, a, a tweaking my own way of doing business. And I think when we talk about teaching and I, I teach younger trainers, um, you, you, got, you can't be afraid to adapt and adjust your methods. You have to, you have to look at what you're mm -hmm. teaching, understand the dynamics behind them. Are they simple problems and complex? Uh, and there's a multitude of words, right? Order versus disorder, infinite versus finite, uh, structural problems versus ill structural problems, wicked versus that goes on and on and on, <laughs> right? 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 Yeah. There's a Make it simple. <laughs> yeah. Right. Make it simple. Yeah. So, so if we got like, if we're gonna learn something technical, whatever that is. In my world, I always use the example of a crime scene. Yeah. Process in the crime scene, getting fingerprints and collecting evidence. Then I can I can plan for that, right? It's a technical problem, right? I can plan for it. I can have good practices and best practices, right? And I can yeah. have school solutions and SOPs and all that stuff, checklists to follow. And I'll come up with a good, nice gathering, right? Process yeah. and gathering in, in uh, exhibiting evidence in a court of law, right? Versus what I try to teach is that side of, for those types of problems, but with the adaptive challenges, I need this constant ability of thinking going on. Yeah. And driving that is big. And that takes me being able to make sense of things, right? To size things up or sense making. It takes my, the ability for me to be able to frame the problem and, and then attempt to solve it, come up with a course of action. And, and again, to going back to what we talked about earlier, adapt when necessary, all right? Yeah. That requires experience and wisdom. That requires intuition and rational thinking, right? So you got critical and creative thinking, right? Uh, in, or, 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 or intuition guided by um, rational thinking, if you will, right? When you can, informed intuition is, a, is the way I like to put it. Uh, and a lot of times intuition is great, but it's if I have time to think, right, I can get more information to help me make sure that my intuition is right. Yeah. And that depends again on what types of problems they are. Yeah, and it makes the it more very, you know, right, the better you can take, yeah, or make decisions. Yeah. But this sometimes you don't. I can, yeah, no, but 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 at certain points, uh, you you need to react at that moment. So you can mm -hmm. collect more, right? So uh, there you make, have to make a decision. I have a, another question. So when you go out and teach if it's leadership um, mm -hmm. and you have all these awesome tools and knowledge how to go in, how do you, how do you get trust within? Because I'm sure you, you need to have, if, if, if you have teamwork or so you have leadership teams, they need to trust each other. What if there's lack, lack of trust in the leadership? What do you do? Well, that's a problem we have in, in our world. So I, I understand where it's coming from. Yeah, it, it's it, it has to be built. It's 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 a cultural thing in policing, uh, yeah. and probably in the West. Probably in the West, it's a cultural thing. There's a big thing on rank and structure, and I'm not against any of that. But you have to, if you're going to be in that leadership position, the, the leaders can come with no rank, right? Yeah, they can be frontline personnel uh, and be a leader. Um, so we just actually have conversations, bosses versus leaders. Can yeah. they be one and the same? Sure they can. But there's some bosses who don't know how to lead, right? Yeah. They use their authority 
Um, uh, they have authority and people will do what they tell you to do, but that's it. Yeah. That's all they'll do, right? Yeah. Uh, and I've seen that uh, a lot in, in, in the police world. You want me to do that? All right, then that's all they'll get. They could have done twice as much, but they won't yeah. do it because you didn't tell them. If you told them three, they give you three, right? Yeah. Not four, not five. Yeah, yeah. Versus a leader. No. So <laughs> trust, yeah, but trust is huge. Developing mutual trust is huge. I got a program I developed 20 years ago on it because it was such a such a big problem I've seen in policing. And it's still, it, believe it or not, it's still an issue. Yeah. Developing trust is huge. It, it, it's earned. All too often, though, people would rank think it's, it's, a, it's a given. And it's not a given. If you don't earn trust, you don't get it. It's a two-way yeah. street. Yeah. Um, it, 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 and, and it's, it's, it's really, how, how do I put it? It's, it's simple, <laughs> but not easy. <laughs> because because you gotta you gotta live and breathe your values. Yeah, uh, you can't you 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 gotta you gotta live and breathe them. If you say dependability is important, trust is important, you gotta show it. And, yeah. and if you don't show it, people go, "What are you talking about? There's there's nothing here." Uh, if you say honesty is important, you gotta make sure you're living it. Uh, yeah, these things are important. So it it's the cultural side of things in the West. Um, is, is very difficult because there's a lot of weight on rank and position, all right? And, and I'm not yeah. saying there shouldn't be. I'm just saying if you're going to be in those positions, you have to understand what leadership is. Leadership is influencing people. It's about people. Yeah. I said, I listened is. to your podcast. Yeah. And I've listened to all of them uh, since I <laughs> found you. out about you, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. I, I went on a, I love learning. So I was listening and there was, there was, uh, the episodes were great, but they, a couple of them were centered on people. I thought that yeah. was beautiful because it's huge. You know, it's funny in policing, we talk about fair and impartial policing, right? Go out into the community, be fair and impartial. But internally, if you're not treating your people fair and impartially internally, your cops say that, so to speak, yeah. they're not going to go out on the street and be, and do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's important. Yeah. We have to, we have to live and breathe the values that we identify together as an organization as important, right? And that's how you get into developing trust. And it's a, it's a work in progress. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes mm. time. I, matter of fact, I, if I remember right, I hear, I remember one guy talking about leadership on your podcast that took for Bose. Uh, yeah. Hasty, was that his name? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and I loved it when he said it, it was a 19 year journey. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, right. I've been on I've been on one trying to change things in policing for, for the same amount of time. And I I said, yeah. finally, some somebody understands me. Right? me. <laughs> gets, yeah, because you say, yeah. what's happened? What's taking so long? What's taking right? so long? Yeah. It, but it, it, because what happens in police work, there's not a lot of training for leaders. No. So believe it or not, they learn guys will be working the street. They'll see a boss and they'll say, man, he's mean. He's he's this. He's that. He doesn't leave. Yeah. Right. He's just telling us what to do and he's mean about it. Uh, I'll never be like that. Then they become a boss. And what do they do? They, the same. they there's no right. yeah, there's no training for them or yeah. very little. Yeah. Right. Uh, and they end up just falling back on what they've seen and yeah. what they've learned. And that's something policing and specifically po policing has to learn. You can't just take uh, a week or two and train guys and put them in positions of leadership when they don't really they don't understand. Um, I, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, they don't understand what leadership is and what, what its mission is, is to influence people to solve problems, whatever they might be. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it does. It does. Yeah, no, it, it is a journey. It takes, it, it's, yeah. it's a never ending journey. Um, and, and you ask, and how, well, how do you yeah. do it? How yeah. do you do it? And that's it. You have to live it. You have yeah. to live it. You have to breathe it. You have to defend what's defendable, condemn what's condemnable. Right. Yeah. And do it in a way that is not in the, uh, uh, the sense of punishment. But how do we learn from the mistakes that were made? Right yeah. now, if it's something in the police world, though, obviously, if somebody dies because of a mistake, it's more serious. Right. Of course. Uh, and you don't get to just say, oh, it was a mistake. Let's move on. Yeah. 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 So sometimes there'll be punishment involved or somebody loses a job. Or as we're seeing now, uh, even in uh, some cops uh, could end up in jail, depending yeah. on it. And you got to weigh everything, right? Obviously, to come to those decisions, but that's we're seeing changes. So we have to get out there now and talk to our cops and say, okay, what what are we going to do to make us better to be able to solve problems? Yeah. In the world, 
How are our strategy operations and the tactics we utilize at solving problems, right? How we, what are we going to use and how do they impact, right? Because it's not just your boss, they impact the public in our world. Yeah. So what influence do they have on the physical? A cop can win on the street. He can win the fight, survive the shooting because he shoots the bad guy. He can win, right? Yeah. On the street in the physical realm, but he can lose in the mental and moral game, right? And the, and the way conflict unfolds, it unfolds in those three domains, the physical, yeah. the here and now, you and me, right? Having a fight or a conversation, debate or an argument in the physical world, right? Uh, and that's usually what we see. Here's yeah. the problem, let's fix it. And we don't understand that there's a mental game and a moral component to the game. That's where the values and, and decision-making all come into play. And you gotta, you gotta develop them all so they blend, right? So that they blend. And, and there's another problem, right? Now that I'm t thinking about it, is yeah. all too often for years, we teach in silos. You yeah. take a cop, you put them in the academy, you tell them, okay, you're gonna learn about the law. You're gonna learn yeah. about the constitutional law. You're gonna learn about domestic violence. You're gonna learn yeah. about defensive tactics, how to handle yourself with your hands. You're gonna learn about handcuffing. Then you're gonna go learn to shoot, right? And everything's done in a silo, but in the real world, yeah. that all happens where? It happens yeah. at the same together, time. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. So there's, that's a big piece of it. You got to interleave the training, right? And a, a lot of it, it would put them into the complex problems they're going to deal with right from day one, from the first yeah. time you got them and, and let them roll through it instead of, and I get why they're trying, they got 50, 60 guys in an academy. They're trying to organize it in a way yeah. uh, so they can teach. But the problem is, the structure of that learning hasn't taught you how to deal with the real problems on the outside. And yeah. that's a big issue. That's yeah. a big, big, big problem. When I see a lot of these issues on the street, I'm not talking about the rare occurrence of a bad cop, you know, just somebody who should never been a cop is just no, bad, no, no. Bad, right? Or criminal even. I'm talking about a, a lot of the mistakes that get made, um, uh, training mistakes. We yeah. develop people. I tell people all the time, I go, we got cops going to jail for doing what they were taught to do. Something's yeah. wrong with this picture, right? In my yeah. world, we're teaching them to do certain things and they're doing it and then they're in trouble, right? And, yeah. and that's a big part of police training is Pavlov's dog, stimulus response. That's a big part of it. What If I teach you that on the in training, what are you going to do on the street? What are you going to do? If I teach you knife, uh, it's a it's a threat. Pull the trigger. What's going to happen when if I've done that a thousand times or more on the range, right? Yeah. What happens when I see it on the street in the real world? I'm not trying to teach them that. I'm trying to teach them to think and do it. But that isn't what I taught them. I taught them stimulus response, so they do it. Yeah. Right. Does this make sense? Yeah, it does. No, it does. does this make yeah. sense so to you? It's because yeah, it, it, because it's, it's, it's so, the mindset. Yes, right? you, so, you're teaching them oh. to, to think. It's that's the but but uh, yeah. Uh, and not yes. just follow that checklist to say, I mean, if this is the situation, see, then I do A, right. and then I do B, and then I do C. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and I get where it comes from. It's uh, unintentional. Uh, the old Hicks law, which works great on the assembly line, teach him one way to put the tire on, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and it'll be right. He doesn't have to think. But that yeah. doesn't work without in the world of, of policing where I need, I need people to be able to choose from options you know, yeah. based on what's going on. Yeah. And that option, they may have never been taught. Yeah. They have to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's and to, it's to connect, piece. right? It's to observe and be critical thinking and then create a solution of, of what you're seeing and the critical thinking uh, where you maybe, Absolutely. as you said, maybe you haven't done it before. So, so that's the, right. to you think might not, on you your might. feet. This certain, yeah. You know what? You could go to, you, you could, in police world, you could go to a call, whatever it is, stop a car, go to a domestic. You could, you could respond to the domestic call, talk to the person, right? Have a calm outcome, right? Leave, everything's fine. Get called back two hours later and it's, it's a violent encounter, right? Yeah. That quick. Same, yeah. same location, same place, yeah, but different time, yeah. right? And yeah. it can change. And that's why when we talk passion for training and learning, it's such an important thing uh, for you in the business world uh, innovation on a, a new uh, product drug, right? That's going to help yeah. people and save lives. Or in my world, um, uh, which is basically similar, very similar, right? Yeah. Uh, 
only I need guys, we need guys to be able to see what's taking place in front of them. And all too often we've taught them do this every time. We give them the, we give them the, here's the domestic and we give them a one way of handling domestic and it works great when everybody cooperates. But when people decide not to cooperate, everybody's nervous and thrown off and they're confused, even the yeah. police, right? Yeah. Uh, and it causes problems. I, I use a coffee analogy. I say, look, yeah. I, 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 I got coffee. I have a cup of coffee. I like um, Starbucks, say, right? Or Dunkin' Donuts or yeah. Pete's, right? Whatever it is, I like it. But then in each one of them, do you like dark roast? Do you like medium? Do you like blonde? Do you, you know what I'm saying? The, the lighter yeah. roast? Uh, yeah. Do you have cream in it? Sugar in it, right? <laughs> so if I grab your cup of coffee and it's different from mine, it's a cup of yeah. coffee, but it's yeah. not my cup of coffee, right? So I use that analogy, boy called that building snowmobiles. You've got to be able to take whatever it is you see, the patterns you recognize from experience, and that's super that you know all these patents, but you got to look at what's happening right now in front of your face. And okay, all these things look similar, but here's the difference. Here's the yeah. anomalies. Here's the things outside what yesterday's call was, right? Or yesterday's problem was. This problem is based on these things and we have to have a unique solution to it. Yeah, and that's a big piece of training. And I think when we learn to develop and teach people how to think, right? And how to do instead of telling them what to think and what to do is a big, it sounds very simplified and there's a lot more to it, but that's a big step in the right direction in my world because it's, you can't teach um, every possible response to every set, set of circumstances because certain things in, in those adaptive challenges we face are unique. Yeah. So we need to have guys that are capable instead of, and, and, and you know what, I, I heard, I think you were talking about micro skills. Yeah. And those are important that I, I have to teach those skill sets, right? In order to be able to do certain things, basic fundamental things that are, that are the basic foundational principles to whatever it is we're doing to problem solving, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's important. I just got to be careful that when I'm, t when, when we're doing those, we're not just locking them into only those things. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But what about, I want to go back because you said when, when you were um, learning, you know, from Terry, right? Where you said the, the get the questions yes. up using the tool. And you had said to the feeling of you had the resistance and then you changed. The, and then now you love that way of, 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 of the tool and the approach. And now you're using it. Yeah. So when you go out and teach, I'm sure you can see mm -hmm. yourself with that resistance in other people sitting there looking at you. How do you? Now that you you've mm -hmm. been through that, right? The resistant phase. <laughs> how yeah. do you how do you then yeah. use your knowledge there to get them? Because you have to get through the phases. You can't just say, "Oh, drop it," right? Just oh, love it God. from this first second. How? Yeah. What kind of no. tools they, do you do or use to get them through that process? And of course, you want it to be faster, right? Because then you can get them much better yep. outcome. So what what do you do? What, What's your secret? We start well, I start them out as a teacher facilitating. I start right from the get go. They come in. This is my. This is what you're. This question is my favorite part of this whole game, right? <laughs> when they come into a classroom, and I've done this with military guys too. When they come into a classroom, they used to sit in a class facing the teacher, right? Yeah. And then what they what they expecting? They're expecting me to tell them what to do for the week, yeah. right? But as soon as they come in, I go like this. I go, yeah. I said this looks this is kind of boring. We're not going to learn this way. We're going to learn in groups. I want you all to put yourselves in even groups. Say there's 25 people in the room or 26 <laughs> people. I said, I want you to put yourselves in groups that's conducive to good communication, collaboration, and learning. I said, you got one minute, go. And they, they look at me, starting now. <laughs> right? And they, they run around and usually they're looking at me like, they don't know what they haven't figured it out right so they push things around they try it's a mess right yeah it's chaos in the room so then they're done i go time's up i go okay what's the problem they go well you didn't tell us exactly what you meant and i go oh so my my intent my mission and intent wasn't clear right what i was trying to accomplish and they say yeah i said is that a problem in police work and leadership and it starts right there yeah and i said okay so what do you need to know right 
And then they ask questions, we give them answers, and I give them, okay, now you got 30 seconds, do it. And they put it into play, and it starts out right there. And then they're still not, they're still lost. They're still, yeah. <laughs> for the first day of a five-day school, and I love this, they got this look like, what is he doing? Yeah. This is, we're not used to this. Who hired right? this guy? And then no. I give them simple, <laughs> simpler scenarios that they may have seen. Yes. But but by the end of the first day, maybe halfway through the second day, it clicks and they go, wait a minute. Because I've yeah. given them several scenarios now. And I, I, I start out with deaths. I move up the, I, I slowly get up the major over the week. By the time they're done in a week long leadership class with me, uh, the last day, last half a day in the, in the, the Friday after is they're developing their own scenario of a yeah. problem they're going to see in policing and leadership. And they have to, they have to lay it out like they're going to teach their guys and the other groups that are in it play their particular scenario that they got. And the ones that are involved critique what they did and it, it goes on. It makes it, it's into a bigger deal. Uh, it, it, and the learning that comes, they tell me, hey, now we get an idea. Instead of just preaching theory, theory X yeah. and theory Y on leadership, now that they're, they're seeing how it applies and they're learning it in scenarios. And so that's what I do. I just scenario base them. I slowly get them. I let them critique. I start out showing them. I, okay, oh, here's some questions I have for you. They're, Good job, but what about this? What about that? I make them do two things, either shift it and adjust it or defend yeah. it. Defend their decisions. If they think they're right, defend it. Though I don't want them caving if they if they believe they're right. And as we work through the week uh, of doing these scenarios, uh, they build confidence in it. And by when they're building confidence, they build their, they they build faith and confidence. They can look at problems and lay out the solutions. Especially work they they become believers in collaboration, sitting down working together. Policing's big, believe it or not. Uh, most of the time, guys are out working the streets pretty much alone, right? Mm -hmm. With a few exceptions. Uh, they get calls where they band together, but a lot of times they're off working alone. So they, it, 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 they're not used to, to working together like they should be, which is a big, huge piece of what, when something goes bad, yeah. you're working together. But, yes. they, but the bottom line is 90, 95% of police work is quiet and calm, right? You're doing yeah. quality of life issues. There's, there's time. There's nobody trying to hurt you. And it goes on and on that, and then that small percentage of time they have to learn to work together. So that's how we do it. We do it through scenarios. Okay. Uh, we go from simple and build and build on it. I'm done. And and by the time uh, two or three days into it, they're they're loving it and they become yeah. believers in it. Um, and it it, it 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 builds that trust with the instructor. I had an instructor my last class a month ago, an instructor come out who teaches the same class I do. And he says, how come I'm not getting, a, we're not getting the reviews you're getting, right? And I said, well, how do you teach it? And he says, well, yeah. I read them the PowerPoint. <laughs> oh yeah. I, so yeah. I said, well, we don't read PowerPoints. No. I said, we, we use oh. the PowerPoint and show them yeah. things. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, right. uh, we read, we show them, but we don't, we don't live in the PowerPoint. We, we, yeah. we bring up everything that's in the PowerPoint via scenario yeah. you teach with an experience right they're getting an experience yeah. going through it it's a journey and not just a one-way communication yeah that's the difference and, and you know what sandy you know what's beautiful they do all the work the students yeah. do the work yeah it's the first yeah. day or two you're tweaking it but yeah. then they do all the work they take over the guy i teach with uh he, he was a swat guy a swat operator and he was a chief of police and he's retired now too but he teaches he goes freddie he goes this is beautiful i've never seen anything like it he says all the years yeah. He goes, I've been teaching. We tell people what to do. We yeah. do this. You got this, do yeah. that. Right. Yeah. He goes, this is unbelievable. He said, so now he's, he's taken over. I used to develop the scenarios. I still do, but he, he loves doing it. He says, let me come up with the scenarios where you okay. do this. And I said, okay. Yeah. So he develops it. and um, he loves it because it becomes, when you see it work, when you see it work, problem solving that way. It's like so much different because I remember being in classes where guys told you what to do. All I tried to do when I was in that class is what yeah. did he want me to do? What did the instructor say? Right. Yeah. And I never, I never thought outside the box. I just did what yeah, he told me okay. and I got through. There were times I got through classes and went like this. I went, uh, yeah. I pass? <laughs> How did I do yeah. that? Right. You're scratching your head. Uh, and you know, you don't, 
a big it, piece of it is making sure they understand why they're doing what they're doing. Why they're doing. So now that when you, you talk about this, right, I'm sitting reflecting already because that's when we sit here and talk. And mm -hmm. if I look back and look at seminars or if I look at conferences or workshops I, I've been attending, um, I, can, I can remember where we did an exercise, right? I remember how we did it and to understand mm -hmm. how to say, solve this, now you're a group and do it. I remember these um, moments, but I don't remember what this woman or man was, was actually talking about with her PowerPoint. So, mm. so it's just yeah. when you right, when you look back, it's like, yeah, no, I yep. have these moments that I remember that that actually had to say, I need to think in a different way. Um, so it's, it's really interesting you know, to, 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 to switch it around and say, let's drop all these it PowerPoints. Is. Because yeah. you know why you remember it? You remember it because it was harder for you because nobody just yeah. told you what to do. So you yeah. had to working with other people, come up with a solution. Yeah. And yes. it was harder for you to do it. And once, but once you figured it out, it sticks. Yeah. Yeah. It sticks instead yeah. of do it this way. You do it yeah. and you walk away after the class yeah. is over. And you're like, uh, how do but, I do but that? Yeah, but, but you, you, you have to solve something you've never solved before, but you also yeah. have to communicate, right? Because you're standing there, the ones I've been in, I'm standing in front of somebody I've never met before, and suddenly we ha we have a team, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and now you have to yes. you, you have to to communicate. You have to ask the questions. You have to to win each other trust really fast to say we're we're doing this together. Yes. Um, and how is, do we do it in a class? Because in these classes, right? Yeah. In these classes, it happens quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you see it happen, so you say, "Wait a minute, how does this?" So we can build that trust in a in a, a, a two or three day class or even a one day class, depending on what it is. Yeah. With people we don't know, we can build it quickly, right? But with people we work with every day, there's resistance. Oh, wait yeah. a minute, I don't know if I can trust yeah. this guy. Right? Yeah. It goes on and on. And it, it, the power of collaboration, some of the, the best classes I've done, and I teach cops all the time. Yeah. And, and, and it's certainly, but the bottom line is, is when I mix them. When I mix cops with firemen and, yeah. and DPW workers in schools, because yeah. everybody's coming at it from their perspective. It's just the, the biases I have as a police officer and how I'm going to do it is this way. Yeah. You know where else I've seen it, right? Yeah. Young rookie cops versus veteran cops. If I got rookie cops in a room and I tell them solve a problem, they're not afraid to adapt and adjust. Where veteran cops go, what do you mean? We never learned this. <laughs> what do you, what? Yeah, you never learned. It's another kind of resistance. Figure out what yeah. You, yeah. Yes. So yeah. these young kids that we're, these millennials, we're so against, right? And attacking, right? All the time for no reason, right? <laughs> yeah. They're more adapt. They're more adaptable. Yeah, adaptable. Right? Yeah, because so let's learn from them, right? Yeah. Into their brain. Yes, let's yeah. learn from them. And yeah. that's the key. Yeah. And, and, and what's funny is when you actually see it as the, as a as an instructor or teacher, you go, wow, look at this. There's something here. And when yeah. I tell old veteran guys, they get like, come on, Fred, are you serious? These kids, right? And I yeah. go, hey, watch. And then they go, are you kidding me? They're it's not the afraid future. to adjust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we haven't browbeaten them with do it this way and only this yeah. way. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's a big, a big curve we got to make in, in my profession uh, of policing is is is, is get stop telling these guys what to do and let them solve problems together in these academies in service training uh balanced by good facilitators are paying attention yeah because course. obviously you got to talk about what lessons yeah. learned and all these things that come into play but yeah. the reality is you want them to kind of uh, you want them to kind of find it out on their own with a little help from us you know what i'm saying yeah. And they and they get better at at solving problems than we could ever make them by telling them what to do every day. And that's hard to get across with people that are stuck in the status quo. I don't find it so much in young, younger generation. They're kind of more open minded to it with the old dogs don't like learning new tricks. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I heard that before. <laughs> although there are some that are trying. Yeah, there yeah. are some that are trying to. But it makes it it makes it difficult when you have to send people out, out, out to deal with the public in the different, in the United States of America, the different cultures we have, uh, different types of uh, personalities, uh, 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 race, everything comes into play. Yeah. We need people that can go out there and think on their feet. And, yeah. and that has to mean something. It's not just a, 
they can't think on their feet. They have to be able to think on their feet. Yeah, they have to be able. No. Okay, last question I have here, so we can wrap it up here. What would you tell Fred like ten or twenty years ago? No, oh, I love this question because there's all kinds of stuff that goes through my mind. If I twenty years ago, I would have told Fred, "Man, get get into some of these more innovative methods. Uh, yeah. Learn more about teaching and developing people. Uh, become a lifelong learner." Right, uh, which which is probably where it started for me, even though I was learning all along, but I would just do what I was told, even in instructor's class. Here's what they, here's how to teach. Get up and read them this PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. right? uh, 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 go against, cut against the grain more uh, and learn from other um, disciplines, from other, from learn from research and development folks, from pharmaceutical companies, from firemen, teachers, uh, all these other places um, yeah. that have experienced developing people as well and, and solving problems that are complex, right? Uh, that would be collaborate more would be the big one. Get in and collaborate and work with people. Um, and, and, and I've seen it work. I've seen it work for in a host of different things, doing little things like mental health related issues, uh, with cops responding, we put together crisis intervention teams where we had people from policing, fire, ambulance, uh, mental health workers, the social workers, uh, yeah. psychiatrists, doctors, everybody in rooms meeting monthly, talking about different cases, solving problems in such a better, uh, such a better way than just handing it to, to the police, for example, right? Yeah. And for years, the police just say, okay, yeah, you want us to do it, we'll do it. But yeah. What did we know about solving them? We didn't know anything, right? Yeah. So we were learning on the fly and a lot of a lot of bad things can happen learning on the fly, Yeah. right? Um, so yeah, the big thing would be, don't be afraid to adapt and adjust your methods of learning. If that was a sim to put it in simple terms, learn and don't be afraid to try this stuff, plain and simple. Thank you. I really enjoyed speaking with you today. Um, it, oh it's, my God. It's funny how fun. it reflects. Yeah, no, and how it reflects in, in things. So yeah, yes. I want to say thank you so much. Well, no, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. If you enjoyed this podcast, and if you'd like to hear more, please subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Until then, stay curious and keep learning.